Hi there. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. And I was going to say, um, I'm so keen to just know where people are based. <laughs> so I'll start with saying I'm actually based in Brighton and Hove, so probably just a, a few kilometers away from Ian. Um, and what a pleasure to, um, to follow him and the other speakers. And I have to say, you guys have done some of my work for me uh, in, doing, in terms of bigging out food partnerships. Um, so just before sharing my screen, I'll be talking about sustainable food places and the, the real value of having local food partnerships, but also our good food movement building work, which which I lead on. Uh, but just to introduce myself, I am the Local Action Coordinator for Sustainable Food Places Program, and I'm based at Sustain, um, the Food and Farming, uh, the Alliance for Better Food and Farming. So we're a food and farming campaigning charity. And I shall share my screen. Okay, cool. Uh, from beginning, there we go. I don't know how to make that thing up just disappear. So anyway, okay. Hi. So, um, so sustainable food places, um, we're a partnership. Oh, we're not at the beginning. So, um, we're a program that in essence is a working to make healthy, sustainable and equitable food, a defining characteristic of where people live. That sounds really broad, but um, so just a bit of background. We're a partnership program led by the Soil Association, Food Matters, and Sustain, which is where I'm based. And we are funded by Esme Fairburn and uh, the Lottery Community Fund. So um, just a little bit about um, sustainable food places and a bit about food partnerships. Um, so we work at a number of sort of geographies. Um, uh, kind of, we started out as sustainable food cities, so I've been working with cities, but um, over the years have expanded that to uh, boroughs, like metropolitan bur boroughs, um, counties, um, as well as towns, so um, smaller than kind of, you know, at a district level as well. Um, but we tend to work at a kind of a town and higher, a town and bigger level. Um, and we work, we support areas to establish a cross-sector food partnership that brings together uh, local authority and public sector bodies, third sector organizations, including brilliant community and grassroots organizations, as well as businesses and institutions. And this is a, a very important part that it's cross sector and brings together actors at these different spheres. Um, and these actors coming together develop a vision, strategy, and action plan for making healthy and sustainable food a defining characteristic people live. But what that basically means, it's supporting people's access, the kind of right to food and right to access of healthy, equitable, sustainable uh, food but also supporting enterprise, supporting community food activity. So everything from production to distribution uh, to set um, business and consumption. And we work together to realize that vision through concerted and coordinated action uh, across a wide range of food issues. Um, and uh, as part of this, we also, um, and I think this is my favorite bit and what I'm gonna be talking about is really linking up um, from the grassroots all the way to local and indeed national policy action. So we want to make sure that the two are uh, informing one another. And I think crucially that grassroots um, lived knowledge informs national policy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we work around a number of different issues. Um, so this is our kind of six key themes um, uh, that includes food governance and strategy. That's the kind of like boring, not so sexy bit, but that's actually bringing together those stakeholders to have a kind of structure of meetings. Um, that's kind of in essence, a part of a food partnership is meeting every few months, say three months, um, a kind of as a board or just um, a kind of, uh, an alliance um, to to look at uh, to to build and develop further um, their city their area food strategy or food plan. Um, and there's also work which um, I'm supporting around good food movement building is that and that's making sure that that kind of first governance and strategy element actually uh, brings in and is influenced by um, public and community activity and also that there are meaningful ways for people to get involved in this so it's not something that just sits behind closed doors and I like to think of this as actually making sure there are places at the table um, in those decision making tables uh, for people with that lived experience with that brilliant sort of that community leadership and championship, which I'm sure many people here, that's exactly what you do. That's your bread and butter. You're making things happen on the ground. 
Uh, we also do work around healthy food for all. Um, a lot of this actually takes place within our campaigns, such as Sugar Smart and Fetch Cities. Uh, we do work around sustainable food economy. Um, so we're currently developing a food economy kind of work strength, potentially a future campaign. We also do a significant amount of work on catering and procurement um, that cuts across all issues. And I think it's a real bread and butter uh, of work within food partnerships um, and work around food for the planet. And again, um, we're, uh, we're in the process of developing developing a food and climate campaign um, that will bring together a number of different issues. Um, so that's kind of what we look like. Uh, we have awards uh, program. I'm going to pass by that. <laughs> but um, I wanted to kind of uh, get into good food movement and sort of what does a public led good food movement perhaps look like. Um, and so my main work is around supporting food partnerships to do this. So to make sure that they are meaningfully involving and creating uh, opportunities for leadership for activists, members of the public and grassroots groups, uh, but also really, really interested in bringing places uh, together and hearing expertise from places that don't have food partnerships because they may well be doing really brilliant ways um, of doing this that food partnerships themselves can learn on. So this just to say, even if you're in an area that doesn't have a food partnership, I do want to hear from you around this stuff. So the two main areas of work that we're focusing on is inspiring and engaging the public about good food. So this is really kind of, you know, promoting and kind of putting out information. So that's having good communication channels like newsletters, having lots of interesting activities and events happen like at the moment, past year online, uh, but normally offline as well. Um, signposting opportunities, making sure that if somebody's ready to get involved in something that they know where to go, where to volunteer um, and building an area wide food identity. That sounds kind of nebulous, but that's kind of where you're like, you know, the place where I live, how, what kind of, you know, what, how, how do we do food locally? Somebody mentioned earlier a question about Hull. It's like, how does Hull's fishing history factor into what happens locally at the moment? And the, the second kind of strand of work is around fostering food citizenship and a public movement around good food. And people often ask, like, what does food citizenship mean? You know, and I think citizenship, I suppose, how do you, uh, how do you, uh, um, act on your citizenship. I suppose you vote every few years, um, but there are other ways. It's how you look after your community. Um, how do you get involved? Uh, but also, how do you make your voice heard? And I think in between those opportunities to vote. And I think that's the same for food is actually how do you, where's your responsibility lie within your community, but also your town and city? Um, and how do you lead? How do you support? And how do you help shape the future of your local area when it comes to food. So we do that around supporting convening networks. Um, uh, this, this is a bit interesting, uh, supporting community land and venue access. I'll talk about that a little later, but if there are no spaces for people to be productive, like is that really a thriving good food movement? And I would argue no. Um, also providing training resources and funding for community initiatives. So really this stuff cannot happen without uh, resource sharing opportunities. And our increasing participation in productive food activity um, harkens back to what uh, Martin was talking about. I think a key element of food citizenship is for people to be able to roll up their sleeves and get involved in their food system, not just by consuming it. So a couple of quick case studies. Um, so just to say we're in a pilot stage, we have 12 local areas uh, everywhere from, we have a small island in Scotland and we have rural areas as well as bigger cities like Bristol, um, all trialing different approaches to building good food movements. So Bristol is doing its uh, Bristol Bites Back Better campaign. And one of the things they've done is they're doing a kind of community participation support work, uh, having a dedicated community participation lead that comes to communities where they are rather than expecting them to come to the food partnership. They've also, as you see in the picture, have run a public ad campaign supporting people to get involved. Um, they produced a series of beautiful short films on their website. Um, I, I definitely recommend um, checking them out. Um, actually telling the people themselves doing great food work. Uh, telling their stories. Um, and um, they're, they've, as, all of this feeds into uh, public consultation and input, input into their good food plan. So um, this is very much about that kind of the food citizenship element of um, helping to shape the, um, the policy within your local area. The other quick case study is Cardiff. Um, and um, they're doing a quite, a, quite a bit of work around this sort of uh, banner um, name of field to fork. 
Um, they've done a good food card of festival. Hold your horses. They did it in person <laughs> last autumn. They did a gorgeous, amazing way of uh, a COVID safe way uh, to bring people together in real life, um, sharing plants, uh, sharing food, and they built, developed a toolkit around that. Um, they've, they're also supporting neighborhood level mini food partnerships. So that's again, having those kind of convening spaces across a number of different issues, a number of different local, hyper local stakeholders at that sort of neighborhood level that then can feed into the food partner uh, recognizing that not everybody will come to you. So sometimes you have to support and come to people where they are. Um, and they're also doing a field to fork people's assembly, again, as a way to get people's input, um, members of the public, but also community groups to help shape uh, the city's food strategy. Um, other pilots you'll see here um, is a local magic beans project, basically making beans on toast, developing a British grown beans and bringing the community together around that. Um, supporting kind of multi-level sort of um, multi-stakeholder activist networks, uh, including in a place where there's a thriving community fridge network, but bringing kind of new, new energy into that. Um, and uh, yeah, transform a lot of work around transforming emergency food hubs into kind of co-productive and resilient food hubs. There's a lot of work going on around that. Um, some kind of ready to go uh, community shared assets, such as stall in a box community asset, um, so that local community groups can use. I have no idea on time. I just can't see the clock at all. But um, yeah, uh, converting, to changing schools into multi-purpose community food hubs, which is actually quite radical, <laughs> opening up school doors to the community um, and some other, there's just lots of really great ideas. Um, I, I've been asked, thank you, two minutes, great. Um, just a few challenges is how do you do this in geographically spread in rural localities? If you wanna know any of this, come to the breakout room afterwards. Um, but we are doing a lot of work around that. Also involving long established groups and communities and partnership working where they're so used to working on their own. How do you bring people together? So we're doing quite a bit of work on that as well. And it is possible. Um, and uh, yeah, making sure that this work is like, uh, goes into the long term. Um, just a, a quick thing, this is my top 10 list for things every single neighborhood needs. So um, I think a food partnership and influential allies such as political leaders, um, activists and volunteer networks, community buildings, community land, shared equipment access, um, lots of projects for people to get involved in, um, embedding this in planning to make sure it's not just what you already have, but you unlock new spaces and new opportunities every time ground is broken. Uh, training, networking opportunities, uh, funding, um, support for food enterprise, uh, so people create jobs, and uh, bonus is uh, actually, you should have, every place should have a local food identity. Um, these are ways to get involved, I'll share them later, but uh, get involved in sustainable food places, but also get involved in sustain. Other people have mentioned it before. We have a number of campaigns and projects, explore them, use our free resources, but definitely with sustainable food places, all welcome, uh, not just if you have a food partnership, but we do encourage places to really, it's, it's, it's gold. Um, it does involve uh, a bit of work, but uh, once you have a food partnership in place, so much more is possible. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Vera. What a lot to take in. Some fantastic presentations this afternoon.